But you didn't prep me for that, Susanna. Yeah, I know, I know. I am here with the one and only Parker Harris, co-founder and chief technology officer at Salesforce. Welcome, Parker. Thank you, Susanna. Great to be here. Why do we spend so much time here at Salesforce prioritizing? When I met Mark Benioff in 1998, actually, before we started the company, uh, we actually started talking and he said, well, it's very important. We're clear what our priorities are. And I said, OK, well, just tell me what the priorities are. But it's not about telling each other what the priorities are. It's about aligning on the priorities. And he had created a process at, at uh, Oracle called the V2 Mom. So what's your vision? Tactically, what are you going to do? What do you want to achieve in, in the next year, let's say? What are your values? What's what's most important? Is it speed? Is it quality? Is it performance? Is it, you know, is it profitability? Is it growth? What are your methods and priority order aligned to those values? What are your obstacles that are going to stop you? And what are your metrics? How do you know you when you got there? And, you know, he saw at Oracle that when you can sit around a table and people can nod and say, yes, we're, we're very much aligned. But if you go through some process and the V2 mom and the sales forces, you actually discover that there's some nuances, the gray areas, people aren't totally aligned. And you don't want people walking out of a room or out of a project uh, not aligned. And you don't want them, you know, going to the water cooler later and saying, you know, this isn't going to work because of X, Y, and Z, or I don't really believe in this, or I disagree. You want to make sure everyone is is speaking their truth and and basically working together. And I think that's part of Salesforce's success. You know, we're uh, well over 70,000 people. And um, how do you get those people aligned? I've heard it anecdotally, but I'd love to hear it from you. The story of the first V2 mom. I know there's maybe a napkin involved somewhere. Mm -hmm. You share the, the first V2 mom yeah. story. Actually, we were talking about starting Salesforce. And uh, we hadn't incorporated yet. And we went to Mark's apartment. It was near Coit Tower, where we subsequently started the company in an apartment. And he took out an American Express envelope, you know, rectangle. And he flipped it over and starts writing. So we're going to write a V2 mom. And I go, we don't know what that is. And he wrote out, uh, we wrote out together, what is our v first V2 mom? You know, what are... What's our vision for the company? What are our values, methods, obstacles, metrics? And I actually saved that uh, envelope and gave it back to him the night before it went public uh, as a gift, uh, just kind of a memory of, of building Salesforce together. What were those first values? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> what were those first values? I don't know. Um, I'd have to look it up. I'm sure trust or some element of trust Actually, trust may not have been very first. I think speed was definitely one. Mm. Um, but we'll have to look it up. Susanna. Yeah, definitely. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, we'll look it up, add it to the show notes. It'll be great. So we're here on the Architects YouTube channel, the Salesforce Architects YouTube channel. So I have some ideas about why prioritization is important for architects. What have you seen as far as folks implementing Salesforce and why yeah. it's so important for the leaders of those implementations to prioritize? Well, you know, the leaders of those implementations might say, you know, I could make this implementation perfect if you give me enough time or you give me enough money. And, you know, guess what? There's never enough time and there's never enough money. And so the only way you're going to get it right is that you focus on the most important things first. So, you know, what's most important? Um, what are your values? I think in an implementation, I probably would put trust way up there as your top value, mm -hmm. certainly mine, you know, is your implementation secure? Is it available? Is it, you know, is the performance what you want? It, does it follow the compliance laws and rules of the industry that you're serving? Um, you know, what are all of the aspects of trust, you know, for the implementation? Um, you know, Salesforce's corporate values, customer success is our second value. That's a pretty good second one. You know, are the end users of your implementation, are they using it? Mm -hmm. Does it work? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, I, are they adopting it? Um, right. Or is the user experience complex? Is, is Are there things that are helping them like workflow and automation? Um, is there AI in there helping them? You know, and are you talking to them directly and getting the feedback and right. knowing that they are successful? Mm -hmm. You know, and then innovation after that, you know, 
yes, it's great to have, you know, generative AI, wonderful, very exciting. We're all in the middle of generative AI right now. That's the first thing you focus on and you don't have a trust implementation and the existing users aren't successful. Who cares if you've added this cool new feature? Right. It'll, it'll look good. It'll be sexy. You know, everyone's going to cheer you on, but it will not be a successful implementation. And, you know, that's why, uh, Suzanne, as you know, when we built uh, the well-architected framework, we were very focused on well, what are the priorities? Yeah. Uh, in a, a well-architected solution for Salesforce. If folks are watching and they don't know, everything in well-architected is in priority order. So you're, you heard Parker say trust, then something that yep. sounds a lot like easy, right? Making sure that folks are using uh, using mm -hmm. the platform, that there's great adoption. So we've heard about what good prioritization can, can do, that alignment to get people um, moving all in the same direction. But what about when prioritization fails? When you lose sight of you know, the jobs to be done, mm -hmm. you lose sight of the use case, you lose sight of the customer, and you are prioritizing technology. You know, you're talking, you know, your architects talking to each other about technology, you know, algorithms and data stores, and you know, and you're getting lost in arguing around the technology. And uh, and prioritizing the work based upon a technical uh, mm. discussion, yeah. and you may over architect it. You may build too much. Um, you may not actually solve that uh, business uh, use case or job to be done. Uh, you may not iterate and check. It, are, am I still solving it? And um, and I've seen that time and time again, and that leads to a failed implementation. You may be happy that you feel like the architecture on a whiteboard, like this great, and we implemented it. It's the coolest architecture in the world. I'm so happy about it. But who cares at the end of the day if no one's using it, if they're not, exactly. if they're not getting business value and getting customer success out of it. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think one of the common misunderstandings about prioritization is that you know, why, why do we need it? Why can't we just do it all? And I think you gave a good example of, you know, resources are not, or resources are finite. They're not unlimited. Yeah. But also when we say prioritization, we're not saying that we're not going to do one thing or the other. It, mm -hmm. When does prioritization really come in handy? Well, it's most useful when um, you have people who say, well, th those are both important. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually that's true. Yes, we need to do both. But which one's more important? And often you'll people will say, well, I, I can't prioritize them because right. I need them both. You know, I need security and availability. Okay, but what's more important? Uh, I would say security is more important. Um, and then availability, you know, okay. because, you know, the, the risk of an implementation having a security flaw is much greater than the risk of having availability issues. Right. And what happens when, you know, and you're going to work on both. And by the way, the most important thing may not be the thing you put the most resources on. Mm. Maybe you're using Salesforce and it might be, okay, the security is pretty much taken care of. I'm feeling good about it. The investment's not as high there. I'm going to invest heavily on the solution. But what happens when you then realize, oh, there's some problem that is a security problem, or there's some problem that's an availability problem, or there's some something that I need to invest more in, you're going to look back at your priorities and that's how you're going to understand where to invest. And so, you know, prioritization is all about the gray areas and, mm -hmm. you know, making sure and everything at Salesforce, it's not just well architected, everything at Salesforce right. is prioritized, as you know, Susan. And I think that's part of the secrets of our success. But prioritization is, you know, it's a gray area exercise. It's, you know, it's around when things feel like they're equal, forcing decisions. You know, each year we prioritize the the uh, V two mom, and we do a prioritization prioritization exercise on all of our clouds. You know, but of course, you know, you don't want to say, well, what's more important, service cloud or sales cloud? Our customers need both. Right, but right. This year, this year, and remember, it's a time-based thing. This year, maybe service cloud's more important. Next year, maybe sales cloud's more important. And it depends on the time you're in and listening to the customers. And and also, you know, if it's if it's not written down, you know, then you shouldn't be working on it. So if it's not one of your priorities and you're off doing okay, something yeah. else. 
Um, that doesn't mean you can't, you know, these priorities, uh, the V2 mom and our prioritization ex exercise is a living process. So during the year, things change and, you know, you can't do something else, but you say, oh, you know, we need to pivot and this is more important now. Okay, great. Well, it's more important than what? And you go back, you look at your priorities again. And, um, you know, I, we will share the V2 mom process with all of you. Uh, that's a great way to do it, but it's not the only uh, it's not the only one. It's just important that you are really good about prioritizing and that you do it collaboratively. You don't prioritize um, as an individual and hand it out and say, here are the right. priorities. Definitely. And it's an iterative process as well, right? It's not you just yeah. do it once, pass it down. It's definitely collaborative. So you've been very close to the work that we've done with Well Architected. In your mm -hmm. opinion, what should we prioritize next? Well, it's what I keep saying to uh, you, Suzanne, and the whole leadership team is I'm prioritizing right now the feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have written something uh, and, you know, is it right? Are the priorities right? Is there anything missing? Um, and, uh, you know, when I've asked for the feedback, most of the responses I've had are, the format that it's delivered in. And I, I would like to consume it in different ways. And, you know, I would like more tools to support, you know, evaluating, am I following the framework? All good feedback. That's great feedback. I love it. But it's not really saying, you know, is there something missing from adaptability or adaptable? Mm -hmm. Is there something missing from easy? Is there something missing um, from secure and trusted? Right. Um, you know, and... And please give us the, the Salesforce lives on constructive feedback. We, you know, I love compliments. I love kudos. Great. But then move on. Give us the constructive feedback. And so that's what I'm prioritizing is, you know, making sure it continues to improve in quality and that it improves in adoption, that people are using it. And it's helping all of you architects out there implement uh, Salesforce in a better way. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So keep that feedback coming. We have a feedback form at the bottom of every white paper and well-architected. So yes, give us your constructive feedback. I think that's an important reminder. So I know you use prioritization. We use the V2Mom at Salesforce in our professional lives. Do you ever find this that come in handy in your personal day-to-day -day life prioritization? Do you have a personal V2Mom? I, I do. I, have a, I don't have a formal um, personal V2Mom, but I do use it to kind of think about, you know, the balance in life and you know where are we focusing what what you know what am i doing to improve myself you know what am i learning what am i reading uh you know am i eating healthy am i doing exercise spending time with family you know all those things um and so, you know, but I would, I would say I probably should use it more as Susanna. So it's a good question. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time, Parker. Um, we'll link all the resources we mentioned below. And um, with that, have a wonderful day. 